Good day everyone, my name is Emmanuel E. Dison from BSBA Marketing 3A and this is my presentation for my final requirement for subject entitled Strategic Management where I will discuss the company history, organization chart or the top management, tar target market and the strategies. So let's begin. So for the company history, the original meaning of GMA abbreviation, which referred to station's first service area as the network grew, it was renamed Global Media Arts. So it was started March 1, 1950, 71 years ago by Robert Uncle Bob Stewart RBS TV from 1961 to 1974 and GMA Radio Television Arts through 1971 to 1992. GMA Rainbow Satellite Network from 1992 to 1995. So GMA Network is a Filipino free TV, air television, and radio network. It is a flagship property of publicly traded GMA Network Incorporated. GMA Network, formerly known as Republic Broadcasting System, GMA Radio Television Arts, and GMA Rainbow Satellite Network. So it's commonly referred to as the Capuso Network is reference to the outline of the company's logo. It is a headquartered in the GMA Network Center in Quezon City and its transmitter Tower of Power and it is located at Tandang Sor Avenue, Barangay, Colliat also in the Quezon City with regional stations and offices strategically located in over nine major cities across the country. Network expanded the flagship television station of the GMA as DZBB TV, so GMA 7 Manila, which is carries VHF Channel 7 analog broadcast, with Channel 15 serve as the permanent assigned digital frequency. So the network operates across the Philippine archipelago through the GMA Regional TV Department, which has five originating station and 48 relay stations nationwide so its programming is also available outside the philippines through the philippine pay television channels and gma pinoy tv gma live tv and gma news tv international which is available through satellite and cable tv systems worldwide for our next one we have the slogans of the company gma7 their slogan is a memorable phrase used as repetitive expression of an idea or objective in a clan, so political, commercial, religions, or other setting with the intention of the convincing members of public or a more specified targets group, so such as Kapuso ng bawat Pilipino, one in a heart with every Filipino, Kapuso anumang kulay ng buhay, one in a heart in every colors of life, Buong puso para sa Pilipino, wholehearted for the Filipino. Buong puso para sa kapuso, wholehearted for the one in heart. And buong puso para sa Pinoy abroad, wholehearted for the Filipino abroad. Where you belong, through service, and just news. September 21, 1971, when the President Ferdinand Marcos declared martial law and the shutdowns in the media. Seawards RBS, Rainbow Satellite Network, was one of the few allowed to continue operate but it had to apply for government license every three months so rbs was losing money at the time and it didn't help the philippines citizens were barred from owning or managing the media under the 1973 constitution which is why in 1975 seward's lawyer felipe gozon and gozon's brother-in-law menardo jimenez and gilberto duavit senior Gozon's acquaintance and one of Marcos' presidential assistants took over the station. We have humble beginnings in 1994, 42 employees banded together as the founders and organized GMA7 employees. Multi-purpose cooperative with an initial paid up capital of 21 million on the same year. On the 20th day of May, a certificate of recognition was issued by the Corporate Development Authority or CDA with legal personality to operate the cooperative embark on a credit activity limited to its small resources of 21 million through continuous build up of capital it launched its canteen operation on September 16 1994 so the network thrived and became competitive under the direction of the trio the Gazan, Jimenez, and Duavit families kept 
ownership and control of the network after it went public in 2007. So this is why, slowly but surely, the succeeding years demonstrated the steady build-up and in, install in the capital, the cooperative members enabling the board of directors to act aggressively for expansion and diversification of business activities with the full support of the cooperative members. Next one, we have the revenue. So its declared revenue for 2015 was 13.727 billion or in dollars, 193 million. So 2.62 billion net income attributed to equity holders of the parent company recorded in 2019 so according to gma network's annual report filed with the stock exchange on wednesday the company totals revenue grow 17.23 percent to 19.33 billion pesos in 2020 versus the on previous years 16.49 billion pesos so according to rjl Balin Bean Media Company in GMA Network Incorporated. So it's attributable net income surge to 128.57%, 5.98 billion pesos last year as the revenue for its advertising business increased. So if this is the proof that the company still manages to, to cooperate through the years thanks to the new founder, even in the company's darkest days, especially when all the stations are taken down due to martial law. So for our next one, we have the organizational chart or top management for GMA7. The following tables are according to marketscreener.com. So this is the organization chart or top management for GMA7. So for the first table, we have the names, positions, age, and the year they started. The first table, we have here the managers. So these are the names. So for the first one, we have Felipe Lopez Godson. His position is Chairman and Chief Executive Officer. And he's already 80 years old and he is started in 1975, which is he is the lawyer for Stewart. So for our next one, we have Gilberto Duavit, President or CEO and Executive Director, 56 years old, started since 2000. The next one, we have Felipe Yalong. CFO, Treasurer, Executive Director, and Executive v Vice President, 64 years old and started since 2013. We have here Ronaldo P. Marstrilli, SVP Information and Communication Technology, 55 years old. And we have here Elvis Acheta, Senior Vice President Engineering, 54 years old. And Ari Augusto Chiyo, First Vice President Eduardo Pascual Santos, Compliance Officer, started since 2021. Lizelle Maralag, Chief Marketing Officer and Senior Vice President, 55 years old and started since 2016. For the next one, table for the members of the board. Our first one, we have Felipe Gozon, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer. The next one, we have our Temio Panganiban, Independent Director, 84 years old, started since 2007. Jamie Laya, Independent Director, 82 years old, started since 2008. Joel Marcelo Jimenez, Non-Executive Director, 56 years old and started 2013. So next one, Laura Jimenez Westfall, Non-Executive Director also, 53 years old. Gilberto Duavit, President CEO and the Executive Director, 56 years old, started since 2000. Felipe Yalong, FO Treasurer, Executive Director and Executive Vice President, 64 years old, started since 2013. Last one, we have Judith Duavit uh, Vasquez. She is the Director and 57 years old, started since 1988. So for our last table for shareholders, these are the names, equities, and the percentages that had the company. For our first one, we have the Jimenez family with the total of equities of 791,960,132 with a percentage of 23.5%. Second one, we have Duavit family with the 
with the equivalent equities of 789,821,734 with a percentage of 23.5%. For the third one, we have Gozan Family with the equivalent of equities 716,843,532 and a percentage of 21.3%. So for our next one, we have GMA Holdings Incorporated with the equities of 495,497,850 with the 14.7%. The next one, we have Joel Jimenez with a total of equities 11 million and 3 and the percentage of 0.33%. The next one we have Gilberto Duavit, the equivalent of equities with a 4,007,006 with a percentage of 0.12%. Next one we have ATR Asset Management Incorporated with a total equities of 1,860,112 and the percentage of 0.055%. We have here Felipe Yalong with equities of 1,613,000 and the percentage of 0.048%. We have here Miguel Enriquez with a total of equities 929,000 and the percentage of 0.028%. But for the last one, we have Judy Duavit Vasquez of the total equities of 588,158 and the percentage of 0.017%. So these are the persons involved in the GMA7 company's success. And they operate it excellently for it to run such as a long time. So for our next one, we have target market for the GMA7 company. So the GMA7's prospective target market includes anyone who watches television or listens to the radio. As this is their company's strategy to reach out to more people, it seeks to increase the number of people who watch its material around the world. So seeing the global market as a big growth opportunity for the media organizations. So they expand more audiences by engaging in the new media such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, the production of programs for domestic and international audiences, and the other related businesses, which, which as well as selling of national and regional advertisement time. It is also including movie production, consumers' products, and the other services. So the network is now recognized as one of the notable organizations that promote sustainability in the company, being the first media and broadcasting company in the Philippines to sign with the United Nations UN Global Compact. So which is why they have the loyal audiences and consumers because GMA Network, also known as the Composo Network, is leading broadcasting company which is produces the most innovative, most trusted, and top-rating TV programs. So they are also bring superior entertainment and responsible, unbiased, and timely delivery of accurate news and information to the Filipinos worldwide. So for our last one, we have the strategy of the GMA7 company. After knowing their perfect consumers to their company, they come up with the several strategies that might help to expand the company and to be on top list of all company. So for the television and radio, international subscription, and other industries are the three segments in the company operates. The television and radio sectors of the company involved in television and radio broadcasting as well as selling in national and regional advertisements time. So their goal is to operate as much as they can to expand and connect worldwide. So which is why the cooperate worldwide subscription sector works with foreign cable carriers on subscriptions agreements. So the company owns operates roughly 50 very high frequency of VHF and 40 ultra high frequency UFH television station. So for our next one, we have the movie production consumers items and other services are included in the company other businesses section, film production as well as other information and entertainment related enterprises are part of the company's cooperate strategy. International subscription sector works in international cable companies to set up subscriptions and they also introduce the GMA for the box by default regardless of your supported city. 
GMA for the Box broadcast top 3 exclusive channels. Kapuso Channel, GMA News TV, and Heart of Asia. All free to air digital channels are available based on your area. This is why they also promote their original teleseries segments and films to their audiences and consumers. Creating products such as merchandises for the box are also their strategies to make more profit. So for our next one, we have the sales per businesses and sales per region of the GMA7 company. So for the sales business, we have the television and radio airtime. So for 2019, 15,102 to 91.6% and to 2020 to 16,995.20 percentages of 87.9%. So the delta would be plus 12.54%. So other businesses would be 186.33, 1.1%. 2019 and for the 2020 we have we have 1366.56 and the percentage would be 7.1%. The delta cost would be 633.41%. So for the international subscription we have for 2019 we have 1205.16 and the percentages would be 7.3%. For the 2020 we have 974.17 and the percentage would be 5%. So for the delta is negative 19.17%. So, so for the sales per region, we have the Philippines. For 2019, we have 15,288.30 and the percentage would be 92.7. And for the 2020, we have 18,361.70 and the percentage would be 95%. So for the delta overall is 20.1%. So for the international, we have 1,000. 205.6 and the percentage would be 7.3% in the year 2019. So for the 2020, we have 974.17. The percentage would be 5%. So for the data overall is 19.17%. So for this overall research um, result is based on marketscreener.com for the GMA company. The strategic streamlining by GMA7 TV network that laid off the 200 media workers being undertaken by network is geared towards increasing ratings and revenues of all its regional stations from more efficient operation. The company is not just operating to give Filipinos a good quality of broadcasting televisions, radios, movies, films, or celebrities, but also they are one of the companies that are helped every Filipinos in terms of disaster, which are truly essential to uplift every Filipino life. So these are the indicators that the cooperation is working to aid the Filipino people by establishing a foundation, holding a fundraiser, or broadcasting to those who might wish to help even more. So now that we know about the company GMA7, all the history, target market strategies, and the and how they operate. I, I conclude that they are one of the companies succeed through the years and help Filipino people lives. So that's it for today guys. I hope you learned something and goodbye.